woman in the self who rejoices in and is satisfied with the self alone, fully satiated. For him there is no duty. Huh? For him there is no duty. He's free. Because that is the perfectional state. That is the state that the Vedas are trying to teach us. If you can be satisfied in the self, the self means the soul, the super soul, and the personality of Godhead, or Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Now, these three levels are given in Srimad Bhagavatam, in the first canto. That uh, self-realization is of uh, three types. Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavan, Iti Shabdite. And it's called Brahman realization, Paramatma realization, and Bhagavan realization. These three levels are there. Brahman realization means what we were talking about, contemplating your consciousness, understanding who you really are, that I'm a spirit soul, I'm pure consciousness. Paramatma realization means understanding Antaryami, the Lord in the heart, that he is present within us. Uh, when you look outside through the senses, what do you see? You see the material energy, the material world material qualities, material uh, actions, and so on. But when you look within, what do you see? Well, when you first start looking within, you just see darkness, blackness, nothingness. But if you penetrate deeply enough, you will uh, encounter the Supersoul, Paramatma, Antaryami, Garbo Dakshai Vishnu. Okay? He is within the heart. He is called the localized aspect of the Supreme. And he expands himself everywhere, within even within every atom. So try to understand. God can expand himself unlimitedly, and yet he doesn't reduce in potency. This is the subject of the first mantra of Sri Ishapanishad. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vishishyate The Personality of Godhead is complete and perfect. He's so perfectly complete that he can expand himself in complete units without any diminution in his potency. Okay, so this is the Supreme, the complete whole. That's the most fundamental definition of the Supreme, and this definition of the Supreme is the common ontological root of all true systems of understanding. The Supreme Whole is everything. In the scientific terminology, is called the universe. Uh, but in the Vedic terminology, is called the personality of Godhead. Uh, and Om, the pranava, or the uh, uh, root or seed syllable of the Vedas, symbolizes this complete whole, the concept of everything that is or could be or ever was or will be. That's uh, one or the very, very fundamental understanding of the Supreme. But the Supreme, being unlimited, can create more entities just like himself without any reduction in his transcendental potency. Uh, so when the Lord expands himself, he expands himself in so many ways. Uh, he expands himself as additional personalities of Godhead. He expands himself as the spiritual energy, as the material energy, as the jiva souls. Of the, as the demigods, uh, the material elements, and so many other ways. And he also expands himself as super soul within all of his energies. So he's everywhere. He is everywhere in his original form and with his complete potency. Uh, God is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. And the the uh, self-realization experience that corresponds with that is Paramatma realization. 
And then finally, there's Bhagavan realization, the personality of Godhead, the supreme object and origin of everything. So these three levels uh, correspond to the, the sun rays, the sun disk itself, and the demigod of the sun planet. The example is given. If we study the sun, the first thing we see is the sun rays. In fact, if there weren't rays emanating from the sun, we wouldn't even know that it's there, isn't it? So by studying the sun rays, we can learn a lot because the sun rays are of the same quality as the sun itself. They're separated, though. So similarly, the soul, or Brahman, is uh, the energy, the spiritual energy of God. And by studying the soul, we can learn about God because the soul is of a similar quality to God, just a much smaller quantity. Uh, it's like the ocean and the drop. Uh, the drop of water from, from the ocean is the same quality, the same salinity, the same liquidity, the same so many other uh, qualities. But the quantity is different. Uh, one drop is infinitesimal compared with the ocean. It's unlimited. So the soul is infinitesimal compared with the unlimited personality of Godhead. But still, similar in quality. So by studying Brahman, by studying the soul, we can know something about God. And the next stage is Paramatma. Paramatma, in our analogy, is like studying the sun disk. Uh, we studied the sun rays, we understand the quality, and then we go looking for, well, where is the source? Where is the ocean? If this is the drop, where is the ocean? If this is the ray, then where is the, the source of emanation of this ray? Uh, so then we go uh, to study the sun disk. It's like studying the Paramatma within the heart. He is the origin or of, of the soul. Uh, so he is the ocean of spiritual energy, the unlimited source. Finally, if we go actually travel to the sun planet and we enter the sun planet, then we can meet the demigod of the sun, the personality who controls the whole thing. Huh? The sun is such a huge, amazing, powerful source of energy. Do we think that this is going on without somebody controlling it? That's nonsense. That's madness. Huh? The scientists are crazy. They're just like, you know, batshit nuts. I mean, really, they're just crazy. That they could think that something as powerful as the sun doesn't have any controller. It's just operating according to chance. <laughs> this is nuts. I ask you, Mr. Scientist, does your laboratory uh, operate by chance? Huh? Or is it that every single uh, experiment, every single instrument in your laboratory is controlled directly by you or one of your assistants? Isn't it? Huh? Do any of these instruments operate all on their own? Huh? Let's say you have a little atomic reactor in your laboratory. Huh? Does it just operate by chance? <laughs> Of course, they got. They have to admit, no, I control every single instrument in my laboratory. <laughs> huh? Mr. Scientist, you just proved yourself wrong. Because if your little nuclear reactor in the corner of your lab requires so much instrumentation huh, and so much expert technicians to operate, huh? did, did you ever see, did you see that film, Dr. No? Hmm? It's so funny, you know, James Bond, he sneaks into the, into the mad scientist's laboratory and he just, he, he changes just the one dial that causes the whole thing to blow up. <laughs> so, I mean, one, one wrong move with a nuclear reactor, like Three Mile Island, you know, the whole thing can melt down, like Chernobyl, huh? the whole thing melted down and the Soviets were so stupid. They didn't even put a containment building around their reactor, and so it, like, screwed up the whole state. <laughs> the whole area is now, like, permanently radioactive. 
So you're going to let that you're going to let that reactor be controlled by chance? I don't think so. So here you have the sun. Uh, the sun is so powerful that if anything went wrong, it could destroy the whole solar system. So if you were God and you were creating the solar system, are you going to let the sun operate by chance? I don't think so. No, you're going to put someone very qualified in control of that huge source of energy and make sure that it's regulated and it's stable and it does what it's supposed to do. No? That's intelligent. No? That's any scientist would say, no, I'm not going to let my nuclear reactor sit over in the corner of my laboratory and be controlled by chance. No? I throw, I throw <laughs> dice every hour to determine the control setting.